Denk jij dat je geschikt bent om hier op de mainstage van Drag Race Holland te laten zien dat jij over het meeste charisma, uniqueness, nerve en talent beschikt? Woo! Geef je dan nu op voor het tweede seizoen van Drag Race Holland. En zo niet, sachet away. Of, daar schaat. She already that had hers. Calling all the queens. Do you think you have what it takes to become Drag Race Holland's next drag superstar? The time has come, even though I think it's way too soon. The casting call for Drag Race Holland season 2 has begun. Do you think you have what it takes to win the crown? <laughs> I sure know I didn't, but hey, let's let's drink to that, you know. I will provide a link to the casting call in the description box down below. This could very well be the beginning for the rest of your life, life, life. Drag Race Holland just announced that we're gonna be having a second season and I couldn't have been more proud. To be part of the first season has been such a wild ride for me and I'm so happy that we are gonna be showcasing so many more girls now and show the world that the drag in Holland is so great, so massive, so diverse and I couldn't be any happier than to know that Drag Race Holland season 2 is happening right now. I had the privilege to be the first bearded queen ever on Drag Race. I had the privilege to be on Drag Race Holland season 1. And let me tell you what a wild ride it was. Where should I start? Maybe I should start with when I got the call. Or let's say the email. Because when we were casted, so to say, we all got an email if we wanted to make a casting video. Um, to participate in Drag Race Holland Season 1. So I was going out, I was having a drink with some of my friends and let's just say that I was wasted. <laughs> so, as I was saying, I was out with some friends, I was at my favorite bar, Taboo Bar, which is the best gay bar ever in Amsterdam. And then someone came up to me, I don't remember who it was, but they came up to me and they were like, did you get the email? And I was like, which email? And they were like, well, you might want to check your email. And I kind of understood what was going on because in the hallways they were gossiping that Drag Race Holland was going to happen. I wasn't asked yet, so I felt like maybe they don't want a bearded queen, but who knows. So I opened this email and I see the letter and they asked me to ca make a casting video for Drag Race Holland Season 1. And I was, I was drunk as fuck. I was, my emotions were all over the place and I was just thinking to myself what the fuck am I did I just got asked for a Holland season 1 I got one of my house members with to me and she was also going out with me that night and I told her like I just received an email if I wanted to participate in Drag Race Holland season 1 and <laughs> everything in my mind was going crazy I didn't know where to put my thoughts I was having anxiety, I was excited, I was all over the place. And then I remember the next day I had to uh, make the video actually because they were asking me to make a video within two days and the first day I filmed myself out of drag and I wanted to show myself and who I am out of drag and then the second day I was supposed to deliver it into the mail already with them. But I was having a performance that night at Club Nix. I was booked for Brooke Candy I believe. and. I had to manage my time and see how I could film the audition tape, but also go to the gig, but also deliver it on time before uh, the time was closing, before it was the closing call for the casting videos. So, midway painting, I decided to film myself uh, for the audition video, and then after the performance, I edited some of the tagged videos that I got on Instagram into my edition tape and then I sent it away at like 2 a.m. and they were gonna open the email at 9 a.m. So I was awake until let's say 5 a.m. and I couldn't sleep. So I decided to stay up and then I went to work the next day with no sleep knowing that I might be getting on Drag Race Holland and that was so insane to me. I, I, couldn't, I still couldn't put my thoughts anywhere. So the next couple of days, um, I was just talking to my house members, like, 
what if I'm getting on Drag Race Holland? I might be the first bearded queen ever to be on Drag Race and it was such a big deal to me just to showcase that bearded queens can also be this, you know? And then I remember that one day I was walking with my roommates to um, the, <laughs> the action because, you know, we needed new stuff for the house and we made it a little house trip. <laughs> if you know what the action is, you my girl. <laughs> And on our way, I received a call from a private number, so I thought to myself, this might just be spam, but it might also be the call for Drag Race. So I picked up the phone, and I immediately hear like, congratulations, you made it to Drag Race. And I was like, oh, no, no way. And the anxiety got once again through the roof for me. And I stood there for a second, and I told my roommates like, I made it on Drag Race Holland. I made it on Drag Race Island. And after that, I had to keep quiet for everyone. I had to keep it quiet for everyone. So it was so hard for me to get in touch with people and, you know, get them make stuff for me without letting them know that I will be on Drag Race Island. And I found it such a hard task because I felt like if I would share with anyone that I would need outfits or hair, um, that people would already assume like, oh, so you're on Drag Race, huh? So after I got the confirmation that I was going to be on Drag Race Holland, I immediately called my work and I told them like, listen, I need some time off because I'm going to be on a TV show and I will tell you all about it when I get to work. Alright, so let me just get to the point where I arrived at Drag Race Holland. So, uh, it was the day that I was going to go to Drag Race Holland and I was doing my makeup, I remember, at 4am because I wanted to look perfect for the first day. So I thought to myself, I'm just gonna take five hours to get ready, do my makeup, do my hair, do my outfit and even relax for another hour before the taxi arrives because I don't wanna be going in there all stressed. So the taxi came and they picked me up and I remember my roommate uh, helping me getting downstairs because it was such a big outfit and I had to go downstairs and everything and I didn't want to trip before I would go on drag race. Um, so I got into the taxi and they told me like, you need to give us your phone because if you're gonna be spilling anyone that you're gonna be on Drag Race, it's over for you, you're gonna be disqualified. So I gave my phone and um, I went into the taxi and then it was such a long ride just to the studio itself. So we arrive at the set and I'm immediately taking to the back of the set and I had to go upstairs in a small room until I was being called. I think it's because we're not allowed to see the girls before we are actually entering the workroom. Um, and then eventually they call me that it's my time to go into the workroom. And I remember it was all very quickly, like they put on the microphone on my outfit and then they just checked if everything sounded nice and they were like, well, there's the entrance, enjoy. Have fun, have a good time, and I was like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> so I walked into the workroom and I was just like, uh, 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 not mad, well, snow. I remember looking at the girls and I thought to myself, I know each and every one of these girls. And the thing is, Holland, or let's say the Netherlands, is such a small country, so everyone that's doing drag in Amsterdam or Rotterdam or wherever you might be doing drag. We all know each other, so um, it's not the, like you're gonna meet someone new, at least for the first season. Hold up. Ugh. I'm such a lady. Anyway, I felt like because the Netherlands is so small, you are definitely gonna have people that know each other already before the show. Um, and I was right about that. And um, I remember seeing my sister, Abby, oh my god, and I was just like, this little bitch, she lied to me. Like, she told me that she was not gonna be doing Drag Race Holland because she wanted to see how it was gonna be like. And there she was. It was so good to see all the girls because when we were filming, it was in the beginning of the pandemic. So you have to think to yourself that we just got into this new weird virus situation with the world and we're not really sure what's gonna happen we're not really sure if we're gonna be having our drag jobs after this because you know nightlife is currently closed and we couldn't do anything about it it was just we had to adjust and we had to think of ways to pay our rent and you know get by 
and it was such a relief to see all the girls and be able to be together and be together on the show and like have our own world basically because I feel like being on the set really made us feel like we were living in our own fantasy. Corona was not happening. It was 2019. Like, Corona didn't exist. Um, and it was just very peaceful. So, I, even in that peace, I would think to myself, like, but what if I am gonna get eliminated? And I have to get back to the real world. And I wasn't ready to be in the real world anymore because, you know, I didn't have a job anymore, I didn't have an income, I wasn't able to pay my rent for three months to get on the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was basically at the last resort of myself because I was literally living on the edge to be on Drag Race Holland. So yeah, I saw all the girls and then at one point we all met each other and then Fred walks in and it was just an amazing experience to be on Drag Race Holland and I'm very proud of how far I made it and I hope that the girls on the next season are gonna enjoy it just as much as I did and you know, the first season, it's always the baby, you know, you're always gonna fuck up the first one but the second one is gonna be okay, the third one you're like, okay, I understand it now, I, I get it, like, we know how it's done. But let's get back to the topic of this video, Drag Race Holland Season 2. I am so curious to see who is gonna be on the second season. Who do you think is gonna be on Drag Race Holland Season 2? I asked my Instagram followers to answer this question. I'm just gonna have a look right now. Hello, that's a selfie. Let's do a selfie moment. Hey everyone, I'm filming a video right now and who you think is gonna be on Drag Race Holland Season 2? If you didn't ask... <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm making a video right now on who you think is gonna be in Drag Race Holland Season 2. So if you didn't answer that question before, then just go back into my story and answer the little question, you fucking bitch. Alright, so I'm just gonna be opening all of the answers. Alright. So the first answer that you gave is Luna. And I would love to see Luna. If you don't know her, her name is Luna Math and she is a fierce female drag performer. And she is in my house, the house of madness. What I can say about Luna is that her style is exquisite, it's new, it's refreshing and she likes to do a lot of burlesque performance. She will be up in a total look. She will show up in a full on look and undress from top to bottom and give you the fantasy that you never knew you wanted. She knows how to make a crowd in the bar go wild for her. She once, and I was there, I witnessed it, she once was in a bar called Taboo Bar and she was doing this performance where she would undress. It was a burlesque act. And at some point, she just got all these bottles of champagne and threw it over her naked ass body and it was everything. It was the most sexiest performance I had ever seen. Not only is she a fierce performer, but she's also my best friend and I love her. I've met her, I think three years ago and I saw her at Super Bowl and I was standing in line and it was my first drag show ever and I didn't know anyone from the scene and I just saw Luna and she was wearing this glass heels literal glass and I just had to compliment her on her shoes and she was looking at me like okay thanks thanks I suppose <laughs> and I went inside and I found out that she wasn't with anyone and then she asked me like hey could I stand with you? And we became best friends ever since Super Bowl and we started a house together and you know we're still best friends ever since. The second answer that I have on my phone is Juicy Kutsua. Well let me tell you, I just shot a video with a girl last week. I love me some Juicy Kutsua, she is one fierce bitch. And the thing that I like about her is that she knows her makeup. And I appreciate a queen that knows her makeup because you know, you might be a good performer, but you still look busted sometimes. And with her, I feel like she is such a good makeup artist, and she's funny, and she's witty, and you know, she has that Dutch flair of arrogance that I really enjoy with people. So yeah, I would be really excited to see her on the show. I do wonder who she would be for Snatch Game. I do wonder if she's a good dancer, because I never have seen her like dance or perform before. I have seen her music video that she released a couple of weeks ago and that looked very stunning. So I'm very excited to see what she would be bringing to Drag Race Holland. 
a lot of you replied with you again, I need to see your redemption. I would love to be on Drag Race Holland Season 2 because I felt like the first season I wasn't really ready for it. Like I was, I, I prepared for it but I feel like I wasn't really ready for it. Yeah. I love how my drag daughter is just like, me, myself and I, I should be on the show. So if you don't know her, her name is Cat's Resistant and she's one of my drag daughters as well. And what I find cool about her is that she has such a cool perspective on drag makeup but also drag herself and she would do it like no one else and I feel like that's why I like her as my drag kid because she's not trying to follow the trend but she's really doing what she likes, what she understands in drag and giving a new view on drag basically and that's what I like about my house is that I want to have a lot of people that are basically the outcasts of drag and then make it cool. So yeah. Holland has been pushing the boundaries, so an AFAB queen or a king would be amazing. I agree. I think that we as the Netherlands should have transgender people, transgender girls, AFAB queens, kings, all on Drag Race Holland because we as the Netherlands like to promote ourselves as a diverse country and very accepting and inclusive country. So I feel like Drag Race Holland should really have that diversity as well. Have some drag kings, have some AFAB queens, you know. Let's just call each other drag instead of like drag queen or drag king. Let's just do drag. Tipsy Patron. I would love to see Tipsy Patron on Drag Race Holland Season 2. I think that she's such a fierce bitch and she's really underestimated. A lot of people like to look down on her, but I really feel like she is a fierce ass queen and people are just afraid that she might take your, you know, your gig. And the thing is, she's really underestimated, but people don't really see that she is a fierce ass performer, she knows how to do her makeup, and she, you know, she works on a budget, so she really knows how to make her drag work on a budget. She knows how to be funny, she knows how to be witty, so I feel like she could be an actual good drag contestant. Miss Vanity Love, another one of my children. I would have, I would have, let's just say this, I would love if my whole house would be on the season. I want the representation of the house of madness. I want the legacy, I want that moment happening for me on television. I would love that. So, Miss Vanity Love, she is one of the most kindest, smartest businesswoman you will ever know. And she really exudes love. Basically, Miss Vanity Love exudes love. Doesn't make sense that she has the ability to learn so much. She learned herself makeup, she learned herself how to sew, she learned how to be creative, she learned how to be crafty, she learned how to be working with a budget, working with a bigger amount of money, and you know, she's making it work every single time. And I feel like she is a really fierce ass performer, and she would really make some good television on Drag Race Holland. Next up is Miss Reggie B. The thing about Miss Reggie B is that she has a theater background, she knows how to sing, she knows how to host, she knows how to perform, she can perform like crazy. I've seen her grow so fast and so much in such a small amount of time. I remember that I was going to the Queers Bar when it still existed and she was having a gig there and it wasn't permanent yet, she was just having a night there. And then she did such a great job at performing, at hosting, at selling drinks. She was just the drag queen everyone wanted to be and everyone was jealous of her because of that. Um, and after that she just got like a solid gig over there. Like every single weekend she would be there hosting the gig. Like props to you. What I like about Miss Reggie B is that she knows how to edit her music, she knows how to perform, she knows how to look good, she knows how to be sexy. Um, and she is the daughter of Miss Abby OMG, if I'm correct. Next up is Sledlana. <laughs> and I'm doing that because she likes to be a drag queen pig. Yes, she's a drag queen pig, or is she a pig queen? I don't know. Like. How do we call her? A pick queen? I th yeah, let's go with pick queen because her makeup and it has evolved over the years. I remember that she was go coming to the Netherlands and she was doing something different, but nowadays she likes to be a, a pig, basically. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not insulting her or anything. Like she just likes to be a pig in drag, and it's wow, it's amazing. Like no one is doing it in the Netherlands, so it's so cool. You could find Svetlana in the dark rooms of club church or performing on that stage. Um, she's a fierce performer and she went through a lot. Um, 
she actually came to the Netherlands because her own country wasn't safe enough to live in. Um, and then she made her life work here in the Netherlands. I'm so in awe of what she has done for her own life to make it better. And it takes so much power and, and courage to do something like that. And I just want to tell her that I'm really proud of her and how far she came in the Netherlands. And that I would be so excited to see her on Drag Race Holland. Miss Belle Dommage, this queen is such a strong ass performer. You don't even want to know. I have seen her perform at so many places, Amstel 54, Taboo Bar, Taboo Canteen, Soho, Festivals. She is everywhere, she is booked. When you see her perform, you can really see how much thought and appreciation she has put into her outfit, into her performance, into the storyline, into selling it to the audience. And she really knows what she wants to give you. She knows what she's selling you. And she knows how to make herself interesting. And that's one of the things that I would love to have a little bit more confidence in and have a little bit more knowledge in because girl, I am so jealous of you. Also a little side tea, I want to f*** her so hard out of track. <laughs> Next up is Miss Cartier. Let's say, hey Miss Cartier. I love this queen. I met her a long time ago. I believe it was on just going out. And then I got to really know her during Milkshake Festival a couple of years ago and she is just such a fun queen to be around with because she just makes such a fool out of herself in a positive way she's just like oh you know I just came biking to this gig <laughs> and I'm just like you biked in full drag to this fucking gig like I could never <laughs> but this girl and I think she did it knowingly but she was branding herself because every time that you would go to a gig and she would be there, she would be saying, let's say, hey, Miss Crochet, and she was making the cat phrase work on everyone. So anytime she would be having a gig, she would be like, let's say, hey, Miss Crochet, and everyone would be like, hey, Miss Crochet. There's so much to say about this queen. She can sing, she can dance, she can perform. She has a tiny little waist and I hate her. Whenever I would have a gig with her and I would be so done with wearing heels, she would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't feel anything. <laughs> Next up is Ivory and Lace Monroe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me tell you, this bitch will stomp the motherfucking house down. She is such a motherfucking freaking talented ass performer. And I fucking hate her for it because I could never be her. And Miss Ivy would be performing a five minute long medley and still be able to keep their attention off the people that were watching. That's talent. So what's left to say? She's a craziest performer. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's nice. She's friendly. And she's witty. She's perfect. <laughs> this is what makes me cackle. Okay. So it says, I hope to see room again for a comeback. Honestly, I feel like she deserves it because the way that the judges treated her on the first season She didn't get to showcase her drag at all and like if you're just gonna be on the show for just one episode Nobody can really get to know you and appreciate your drag I feel like so in my opinion she deserves to come back and show us a little bit more of her Miss Fade's intervention dun dun dun. Miss Fade intervention this girl is so fierce and I remember that I helped her when I was still a makeup artist um, and she was just starting out with her drag and she was trying to find her right foundation shade and look at her now, she is a stunning queen, she's a fierce queen, she is the girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever partnership you want to call it with rooms. I think they're so cute together and I think it would be really cool if we would have fate intervention for the storyline because the first season we would have had room service and then we would have the girlfriend of room service and I think that would be creating such a great storyline and we would get to see what her drag is really like because I feel like we haven't had the opportunity to see her perform yet because of Miss Rona. I would love to see how she would perform because I have no idea. I feel like if you're gonna be on her bad side, she's gonna cut up your shoes and burn up your wigs. I don't care, I just want you to marry me. Well, first of all, that's gonna be very hard because of Miss Rona at the moment. I'm not gonna be able to see you. Second of all, I'm only 24, so I haven't been able to live my life to the fullest and I would still like to suck some more dick before I'm gonna settle down to one man. Um, third of all, I don't know you. <laughs>
The House of Vivaldi. I consider Vivaldi as one of my close friends. We always have a very good time together, if you know what I mean. I remember meeting Vivaldi at Lady Galore's lip dub video. Um, it was a Christmas themed lip sync video and we were invited to play a small part in the video. And Vivaldi was just starting out with drag. She had a wig that wasn't styled. It was a flat wig. And I'm saying this because now Vivaldi is known as this queen that makes this beautiful hairstyle that are stylized and are gonna stay like that forever. Vivaldi is just funny without even trying. She's such a great performer, she knows how to make wigs, she knows how to make outfits, she knows how to make petting, she knows how to make a performance, she knows how to edit her music. She can do anything that you will ask of her. The only thing that I worry for Vivaldi is that she might have a little bit of fright for a camera because I've seen that she would close up in front of a camera, but when the camera is not there, she would be the most funniest person without even trying. Back in the day when we were all starting out with drag, um, we once decided to go as a friend group to one of her uh, pageants, because she was competing in a pageant all the way in Maastricht, I believe. It's a city all the way in Limburg, it's the south of the Netherlands, it doesn't really matter. And she prepared this Cher medley, and she prepared this wig that looked just like Cher and her makeup looks just like Cher. So I wouldn't be surprised if she would be doing Cher for Snatch Game because she could really pull it off like Ho 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 I'm Cher bitch! I would be really excited to see what she would bring to Drag Race. Next up is Lulu Hazard. This queen is so stunning it's not even funny. Like no one could compete with her. Like her facial structure is just out of this world. She knows how to paint her face because she is a makeup artist. Um, and she is a funniest performer. And now that we cannot perform in the bars because of Ms. Rona, she has been putting so much effort to put herself out there on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, and she's really doing it flawlessly. And she's just a queen to look out for. And I believe she would do really well on Drag Race Holland. I would love to see Faye on Drag Race Holland. Me fucking too. This girl, I, I think she's not even aware of how talented she is, but her makeup skills are out of this world. She is just such a great makeup artist and I appreciate someone that knows their makeup, knows their face, and knows how to change anatomy on your face and she does that really well. Um, I also think that she is a fierce performer. I saw her perform at like drag nights like uh, New Drag in Town and I always think that she looks stunning, she's fun, she's creative, she, 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 she brings you something new. I do wonder if she would have the nerve to be an outspoken person on Drag Race because I feel like there might be big personalities on the show and she might not be the bigger personality. I remember meeting Faye a couple of years ago and she was still a little bit shy and girly and she grew out to become this big talented drag performer and I'm living for her. What I like about Faye is that she mixes stuff together that you wouldn't necessarily think is drag but then makes it work as drag art. And that's what I really like about Faye is that she's gonna be taking drag to the new perspective, the new wave of drag, the new style of drag. Next up is Love My CC. I love my CC. She has such an amazing voice, it's not even funny. Love My Sissy is a great drag performer, knows how to host, knows how to be funny, knows how to work with an audience. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about is that sometimes she shows up a little bit late or just in time. So I don't want her to be another Kamara Hall. But yeah, stunning queen, I love her. Really should be on Drag Race. Last but not least, Lick a Lolly. I love to lick a lolly. She's part of the holographic house and she's the daughter of Mama Queen. I think that Lick a Lolly is such a stunning queen. She has such a small jaw and such a small little chin going on. And she just looks really, 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 really feminine in drag. The thing that I love the most about Lick a Lolly is that she has that extra sparkle that you're looking for in a drag performer when you see them perform. It's not made up. It's not, there's no fear in their eyes, it's just pure performing and loving what you're doing. And that's what I see when I look at Little Lolly performing. And I hate her for it because she's so good at it. She would make it very far into the competition. The only thing that I fear is that the production is gonna be looking for people that speak Dutch. And I don't know if she speaks Dutch fluently, I know that she speaks a couple of words in Dutch. 
but I don't know how well she would be in just speaking Dutch and that might be a problem with getting onto Drag Race but I would really love, 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 love if Lickalolly would be on Drag Race Holland If I would have to add more people, I would say anyone from my house, the House of Madness because I feel like we are such a diverse house and we really want to sell ourselves as the misfits of drag but then making it cool so I would love to see anyone from my house to appear on Drag Race Holland Alright, so that were all of the queens that you shared with me on Instagram I really hope that one of these queens will show up on Drag Race Holland Season 2 I really enjoyed making this video and if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below who you would like to see on Drag Race Holland Season 2 and if you didn't already, please subscribe to my channel Hope to see you in the next one Nachschaan